Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're building a new character. Today we're building the latest character in Honkai Star Rail, Aventurine. I've been preparing for this man for quite some time now. I've been very excited to build him and today I'm hoping after building a successful Aventurine maybe he can help us beat some of the harder content. But with that all being said let's get into building our blonde egoist. Aventurine. Also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers. And when we hit it, we're going to be doing a big giveaway. In fact, we're going to be giving away one big Onoric Shard Pack. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's get in to building our Aventurine. Now, before we get to actually building him, let's discuss his kit. Because I believe if you don't understand the fundamentals of a character's kit, then you can never know how to build them. However, if you already understand this kit and you've already heard me explain it, then you could skip to this point in the video that will take you past the kit review and into the main build section of the video. But for all those still here with us, let's talk about Aventurine's kit. The first thing we're going to talk about is his technique, which we can use outside of battle and it will give us one of three random effects. These three random effects are going to give us different defense percent buffs. The highest one being Pouring Rain, which will give us a 60% defense increase on all three of our characters when we enter battle. So we're going to enter battle here, and as you can see, all three of our characters have a little defense percent buff. Now, at this point, we're going to talk about his follow-up attacks because the enemies are going to start attacking us, and as you can see, we're going to start racking up points there in the bottom left-hand corner. And when we get the max of those points, that's when we're going to set off and attack the enemy. We just got it maxed there again. Boom, attack the enemy again. Now, how are we getting those points? Well, it's pretty simple. Anytime any enemy attacks us, we're going to gain something called a blind bet point. These points are accumulated in the bottom left. And every time an enemy attacks us, we're going to gain one of these points. However, that's not going to be the only way we're able to get blind bet points. There is actually a couple more ways. One of them being his ultimate ability. His ultimate ability is going to give us a random amount of blind bet points. So we're going to see here, it's going to go off. We're going to get four blind bet points and release a follow-up attack. This ultimate can give us anywhere from one to seven blind bet points. It is random. And it's also going to give a status effect to the enemy called Unnerved. This little debuff effect is going to increase our allies' crit damage when attacking this enemy by 13.5%. Next for his skill, well, it's pretty simple. The skill is just putting up a little shield and increasing our allies' effect resistance. Because if you aren't aware, the Fortified Wager Shield also increases our effect resistance by a certain amount. This effect scales off Aventurine's defense and is also stackable, so you can use it multiple times. Honestly, there's almost no reason to not use it. You gain really nothing out of his basic attack, so almost on all your rotations, you're going to want to use his skill ability, unless you have max shield. In that case, save a skill point and go for a little normal attack. Now there's one more way to gain blind bet points, and that is with the bingo effect. Whenever you have an ally do a follow-up attack, Aventurine is going to gain one blind bet point. Now unfortunately, none of the characters we have in this battle actually do follow-up attacks, so we can't showcase that right now, but I'll make sure to showcase that later when we're testing him. But overall, I think we've covered most of Aventurine's kit. He's super powerful, one of my favorite characters in the game, and probably my favorite sustain, which we've had so far. He can do big damage, grant huge shields, and basically keep your team healthy for the rest of your lives. And that, my friends, is Aventurine. What did you think of him? Let me know in the comments. I personally love him, and that's why we're going to start building him. I've grinded most of the materials we should need to max this guy out and hopefully take him as far as we possibly can. My goal is level 80. Let's see if we can hit it. 40, 50, 60... 70 and we need five more of the suppressing edicts to get to level 80 and you know what while we're killing this boss let's take fu Xuan on her funeral run because she will never be used again i'll miss you fu Xuan. it was fun i'm gonna need that sad violin music this is the last time we're ever using her oh you were fun while you lasted Poor Fu Xuan. She tried her best, but in the end, it just doesn't matter because Aventurine is replacing her on all my teams. 
Anyways, let's get his final ascension. Bing, bang, boom. And level 80. And with that, we can also get three more star rail passes, which we're going to use to go and get a free five star. Because if you don't know, every time you level up your Aventurine, you're going to get a five star, not on the first pull. Instead, you get perfect timing. But then on the second roll, you always get a five star every single time. Damn. I was joking. It's actually always on the third roll. Screw the Next up, his light cone. Let's talk about it. So, Aventurine has probably way too many light cone options. I genuinely think you could probably use like any single light cone here with maybe a few exceptions, but let's talk about it. So, obviously, his best in slot is going to be his five star signature. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this because broke in that. So, instead, we're probably going to have to go for one of the free to play or low spender alternatives. One option is concert for two. This increases our defense and our damage, which is perfect for Aventurine considering he scales with defense and does damage. I like this option. Unfortunately, I don't have it and I don't know how to get it. So I have a couple less options now. We're really limiting myself. Moment of victory can be good. Increases defense. We don't really need the effect hit rate that much, but you get like 48% defense from this. March 7th light cone can be good. The other March 7th light cone can be good. Destiny's threads for woven can honestly be good. There's so many good options. I think my highest recommendation for any free to play player would definitely be this concert for two light cone though. But for me, I don't have that. So instead, we're going to continue Fushuan's funeral run and take moment of victory off of her and put it onto Aventurine. <laughs> Poor Fushuan. She'll recover one day, man. You, here, you can take March 7th light cone. There you go. Level 70 March light cone. Isn't that lovely? Anyways, back to Aventurine. Next thing we gotta do, upgrade all his traces. I have pre-grinded most of the materials, so we'll just skip past this part until I fully max them out. All right, we're mostly done. I got him to 888. I think I'm gonna use some Tears of Dreams to get a couple more traces, and that should be everything we're able to do. Pretty decent traces, not the best, but it will definitely work for Aventurine. Next thing we need is his idol on one which we'll go and get right now because easy peasy, lemon squeezy, I've never lost the 0.5% chance in my life, except for today. Ooh, never mind. I already had her E6. Well, anyways, get no Eidolons for you. These are nice though. And if you're like a mega whale player, you'll probably gain a lot from these. However, I'm not a mega whale player. So I'm going to need to make up for his lack of Eidolons and his relics. So let's talk about his relics because they're pretty complicated to say the least. So there's essentially two different ways you can build a Venturine with relics. There's defense and there's damage. And which one you want is up to you. Personally, I just recommend the defense build. You can kind of do a mix of the two or you can go for full damage. It's completely up to you. And for me particularly, I already have him on moment of victory. So the chances of me going for an offensive build are less likely. However, if you do want to go on offensive adventuring build, you can use something like the pioneer of deep water for the extra crit rate and the increased damage to debuff enemies can be very nice. You can use the two-piece Grand Duke for that extra follow-up attack damage. And if you want to pair that with something like a two-piece attack percent set for more damage. However, for me and my defense buddies, we're probably going to be going for something like Knights of Purity Palace, which gives us more defense percent and increases the max damage that our shield can absorb. Or you can go like a two-piece of that and a two-piece of something else. A two-piece Messenger of Traveler Hackerspace for more speed. A couple good options there, but those are the ones I generally recommend. For planner ornaments, I think his best in slot, or my personal favorite, is Broken Keel, just because of the sheer amount of effect resistance he gets from his traces. However, some other good options include Penacony Land of Dreams for the energy regeneration, or Inert Solosido for that extra follow-up attack damage. And that's about every set I recommend for Aventurine. As for what I have, well... Let's start with his body. So for his body, you're generally going to want crit damage. He already gets a ton of natural crit rate, especially from this leverage trace, which gives him an upward of 48% crit rate if you're able to max it out. That's, of course, if you're going offensive build. If you're going defensive build, then you probably want defense, which is what I'm doing because I need shield 
even though I have like no defense bodies. Well, luckily I have this one and the Knights of Purity Palace set. Surely it's gotta be something good. Okay, one break effect, one crit rate. Another crit rate, actually not bad. Three crit rate, ooh, okay, that's, that's decent, that's decent. We'll put that on Aventurine. Now for our boots, we definitely want another defense percent piece. I like this one. Let's see if we get some crit rate and damage on this piece. Ooh, okay, one of each. One more, come on. Dang, defense. Okay, not the worst piece ever though. We'll definitely still take it. I guess we'll just finish it off now by getting a hat and some gloves. We basically just want the one with the most crit stats and defense percent as possible. Ooh, one defense, one crit damage. I like that. Let's get it again. Damn it. Damn, effect resistance. Ugh, kind of crap. I guess we'll use it though. And then now we just need a hat and get bird. You will never be seeing this piece again. <laughs> Unlucky. And there we go. We got a full four piece Knights of Purity Palace, double defense percent with some nice crit stats. Now, all we need is the two piece. Like I said before, the set I want is going to be Broken Keel. For our orb, we again have the option of either defense percent or imaginary damage bonus for more damage. And to be completely honest, I already looked through all these pieces. None of them have defense because I sack all my defense pieces because I'm Genshin brained. So we're going to upgrade one with crit damage and see how it goes. Ooh, okay. We got crit rate. That's actually a decent piece. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's be a banger. Let's be a banger. Or not. Oh, man. Attack percent. Oh, that's kind of bad. Well, we kind of have to use it, though. Not much choice. Okay. Well, last is our rope. And for the rope, there's not too many options. It's just defense percent. And that's basically it. And luckily for us, I have the god piece right here. Which is not going to treat us like that last piece did. This piece is going to treat me with a little respect. Watch this. Not bad. Two crit rate, one crit damage. We'll take that. Let's get one more stat. Let's go. That's really good. That is super, super good. Two crit rate, two crit damage, and a new Aventurine piece. And just like that, we finished our set. Let's see our final stats. We now have 4,300 defense plus 112 speed, 39 crit rate, but that's not all our crit rate because you have to keep in mind. From our leverage trace, we're going to get an additional 48%, maybe a little lower than that. We'll see. But not only that, we're going to have 35% effect resistance, 24% effect hit rate. That doesn't matter. However, the effect resistance does because now we can activate Broken Keel. And I think our Aventurine is finished. Let's go take him for a little spin. And we're, of course, going to take him to the parlor car. Where else would I take him? And maybe... We'll try for the very first time in Kekfin account history, the 36 star, the Memory of Chaos, which has never been done in Kekfin account history, by the way. This last one, I got 35 because I kept dying with stupid links as my sustainer, but possibly with Aventurine in our party, that may change. Goodbye, links. Aventurine, welcome to the party. We'll use you with Acheron. I like her there. Silver Wolf is also good, and then we need a third character. Ooh, I guess we can go Sparkle here. I like that. Sparkle, Acheron, Silver Wolf, Adventuring. Let's see if we can do it. Here we go. I am ready. Throw up a defense, support, and let's go in. It is time to show what you can do, Adventuring. Unfortunately, you are going to be a little bit slow. That's just how it kind of has to be. But hopefully, when the enemies hit us, we're going to start getting up those points, which is exactly what I need here. Let's go. First one up, 13k. Not crazy, but it does the job. Let's see how much of a crit rate buff we get. Oh, we got the max buff. We got a 48% buff. That is max. Huge. That's going to give us 97 to 160. That's really nice. Of course, that's also enhanced by the sparkle boost. But still, that's really good. Let's throw up a defense. Boom. And we got the burst. Let's see how much this does. Or maybe I'll take it. Not enough, but it did give us two points. Watch your head. Yeah, it's not doing as much as I would like it to do, but it's definitely not bad damage at all. It's just a little additional damage that's going to give our Akron the ability to kill the enemy, hopefully. He's just a little bit of extra on the side. A little bit of a side dish, if you will. Uh, oh, just kidding. We have the infinity shield. You can't do anything. 
Huge damage. Oof. Was that 4.8 million? Holy crap. That character is way too good. And they've done literally zero damage to us, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. They haven't hit us once. Bro, this is embarrassing. I don't even need to use my E defense. There's literally no point. Get him again with the gambling ability. Boom. Six blind bet points. Holy moly. They're dead. Boom. You can't do anything. Oh, this is just embarrassing. Just stop. You're embarrassing yourself, Kakolia. Just give up. There's actually just no point. And now watch this. Now, imaginary on you. And now, only can Aventurine do damage. He can also break you as well. That's huge. Get her on the black and red. And a follow-up. And he broke her too. We can get up the Akron burst here. And I think we just win now, honestly. 4%. And how many cycles is this? Oh, 27. We're just like right under 27. I reckon if we did that again, we could probably get that in the 27 cycle. But 26 isn't bad either. I reckon with Jing Liu now, we could probably finish this out. Unfortunately, this is not the Jing Liu showcase today though. So we'll leave this here for today. But I think for now... We're going to end the video there for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace.